This is a list of the coolest, rarest, and most expensive PS4 games ever. So many of you are already pretty familiar now, but in case you're not, we've already gone over the coolest and rarest mainline consoles in Sony's lineup from PS1, 2, 3, to 4. And now I think it's a great time to actually look at each one's library and really discuss some of the most highly sought after titles. And you know, with PS4, it's interesting. As a modern console, it's a slow transitional period where digital games are seeing physical releases purely off the collection aspect. And there's a few companies that have sprung up offering limited releases, usually disclosing the amount of copies being printed. At this point, there's around 100 games that have been released like this. So obviously we're not gonna be covering all of them. Most of these games typically sell at a budget price around $25 to $30 when they launch, so almost immediately they go up in value. But a vast majority of them float around the $40 to $90 range, so there's only three games in here that are going to fall under that category of being released in this manner by those companies. The rest, I'm hoping, will genuinely surprise you, and I guarantee there's at least one or two things in here you don't know about. But let's start with our first game. Something kind of common is actually a Fortnite, of all things. The original base game that released in 2017. Some people seem to forget amongst the current popularity of this game that it launched as a normal paid for title at retail. And now due to it being so wildly successful, the original release has held its value and then some. A normal used copy fetches for around $60, that holds its value well, but if it's a new copy with untouched codes of the Storm Master's weapon pack, and the early access pack, then the value can range from $150 on the low end and up to $400 on the high end. Now moving on to something that's a bit more low key and not well known that this actually went up in value, but it's Job Simulator for PlayStation VR. This one guts me because I wanted to buy this back when it was in stock for $25 but now it commonly sells for around $100. Job Simulator is still one of the best VR games out there, and it's a perfect entry-level game if you're just trying out VR for the first time. It's funny, it's simple, it's easy on those who may experience motion sickness. It's all around a great game. And without getting into other titles, it's worth noting there's a few PlayStation VR games that have held their value or slightly increased, though not as dramatically as Job Simulator. It seems like a lot of VR games have a single run at retail, and then they're done, causing a more organic life of rarity rather than the games you see from these companies we mentioned earlier. Now, while we're talking about them, that's actually a good segue into this next game, which is Griffin Knight Epic, a game that released through Strictly Limited Games, and they only printed 999 copies, and buying one now is going to run you $250, upwards of $300 on eBay. This is just one of those odd circumstances where instead of this game staying in the 100 or so range that's common with these limited releases, it instead struck a chord with gamers and became highly sought after. It's a 2D medieval style shmup with some pretty interesting boss battles. It's not exactly a game that's taken the world by storm, but it's got a certain charm to it. Now, next up is really three games, but we're going to lump them all into one and it's Jack and Daxter on the PlayStation 4. These are put out from Limited Run, and seeing as how this is a beloved Sony IP that is considered more of a full game instead of the smaller stuff you typically see, it's easy to see how these titles are in this video. The base games were sold for $25, limited to 5,000 copies of Jack 1, and 7,500 copies of Jack 2 and 3. The collector's editions, which included tons of customized goodies, were sold for $85, limited to 3,000 copies for Jack 1, and 3,500 for Jack 2 and 3. Today, the regular games sell for around $75 and collector's editions going for around $400. Now here's the real kicker, Jack X Combat Racing is still coming through limited run and they'll announce the pre-order for that within the coming months probably. And if you are somebody that ordered the first three games and then you also get Jack X Combat Racing, you're gonna get a little surprise. You'll be getting a mock case of Jack 4, a game which doesn't exist, but it'll be using concept art that Naughty Dog internally made when they explored a sequel way back when. Inside the case will be a code for an exclusive PS4 theme, again using original concept art as well. And this will be the only way to obtain this theme. So in theory, a brand new mock case of Jack 4 with an unactivated code for that exclusive theme, that's going to be worth big bucks, no doubt. And uh, don't worry. You already know your boy's on this one. Now the next one I think most of you will probably remember now at this point, but it's PT, the playable teaser for Silent Hills. PT, of course, being announced during Sony's 2014 Gamescom press conference under the guise that it was a new game from a new studio available to try immediately from the PlayStation Store. 
In playing this impressively scary teaser and unlocking its secret ending, we learned about Silent Hills, a joint effort from Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, starring Norman Reedus. Then due to a falling out with publisher Konami, the game was cancelled, and thus PT was removed from the PlayStation Store, and it didn't take long for them to completely remove the ability to re-download it too. So basically, the game needs to live on your hard drive, that's the only way to have it today. It's impossible to get unless you've previously downloaded it, in which case, there's a workaround you can do to trick your system into re-downloading it, but it's kind of a pain. But if you've never had the license on your account, you have no options. Now initially when the game was pulled, people were selling their entire PS4s on eBay with the game installed for $1,000. And this has really died down recently, but if you do check today, there's still some on there with recently sold auctions too. This is a situation where in 10 plus years when the workaround is patched and PS4s start failing, PT will absolutely be highly desirable. Moving on to this next one, I can't really find any copies available, but they are out there. It's the first run of Saints Row 4 re-elected in Australia. See, what happened here is when the game came out for PS4 in 2015 in Australia, it was quickly recalled. The first batch had content on the disc that was considered violating Australia's often strict classification requirements, and this only affected the PS4 version because back when Saints Row 4 came out in 2013, the game was rejected in Australia due to its depictions of drugs and violence, so the game was dialed back and able to release. The original rejected version is what was printed for PS4, and some of those copies were in fact sold. Nobody's exactly sure how many got out there, but it's a very interesting and opportunistic game to have. Our next game is considered more of a low volume title, but it's Toro. In this game you play as a bullfighter, pretty straightforward really, the game itself is not really all that polished and well, it's not really what you'd call the cream of the crop, but this was released only in Spain with most copies trading around $100. I consider a title like this more on the cool side since it's not necessarily a lot of money if you really wanted it, but rather it's just not well known and so I think this would actually look pretty good in any collection. Which now brings us actually to two collector's editions, and I'm just going to lump these together, but it's Persona 5's Take Your Heart Edition and Nier Autonomous Black Box Edition. These are both fantastic games that find themselves in the same scenario, where they're not mainstream enough to have their collector's editions manufactured a lot, and so once they're sold out, they're gone, and they quickly rise in value, and continue to hold it. Nowadays, it's rare for these kinds of collector bundles to go up in value, so it's always notable when they regularly sell for double the launch price. Now getting into our next title, it's Poop Slinger, and yes, this is a real game, yes, it's for PS4, and yes, there's a physical version. Only 84 were made, um, so let's recap this. The game gets announced to have a box copy through Limited Rare Games on April 1st. Everyone thinks it's a scam and a joke but the developer confirms it's real. The price of the game apparently fluctuates as it's limited rare's first release to get off the ground, causing more concern that it's a scam, but 84 people actually made a purchase, so 84 copies were made. Limited rare is now closed down, and Poop Slinger becomes an incredibly rare PS4 game that's recently been selling for over a thousand dollars. Absolutely wild, and you can't make this shit up. But maybe you've heard about this game before and you think, wait a minute, this game's commonly referred to as the rarest PS4 game out there, but not necessarily if you want to count this next one, which is The Lost Bear for PlayStation VR. This is a 2D side-scroller in an outdoor theater-like setting, and this game did not ever actually have an official physical release through retail or even through those publishing companies. This developer instead handed out 13 mock cases with a fake disc and a real download code at a gaming event. What they handed out were actually Blu-ray cases filled with a note saying don't try playing the disc since it won't work. It's a really fascinating story that almost no one really knows about, but so much so that you could probably discredit it entirely for not having a real playable disc. Either way, there's 13 of them out there, and that in itself makes it hyper rare. So. If you exclude this game, then yes, Poop Slinger still reigns supreme. But those are all the coolest, rarest, and most expensive PlayStation 4 games out there. Now, mind you, this console generation is still going on, and PS4 will certainly be a little bit relevant a year and a half, two years into PS5's life cycle, so well beyond 2020, so this may not hold up uh, in terms of if more rare things come along, and certainly that may be the case, but as of right now, if you really went out there and tried to find some of these games, it would be hard if you tried to buy every game in this 
in this list, I mean, it, you would have to front upwards of $1,500 to $2,000 easily at minimum. So it wouldn't be easy, but these are some rare games and certainly ones that I think if any of these were in your collection, it's a proud thing to have. And as I demonstrated in the midpoint of the video, yes, I do have all three of the Jacks so far, waiting for Jack X Combat Racing. That way I can get all the collector's editions in one place and then get that Jack 4 uh, mock case. And that way I'll do a video on the whole thing rather than dish out one video every single time the new edition comes out. That's why I've been holding on to them and people are like, oh, you got to show us that. I'll wait till we have everything. That way it's a bit more substantial and we get that very cool Jack 4 case that we can take a look at. And yeah, you, you guys know I'm on my Jack stuff. I'm a huge Jack fan. Um, and those collector's editions are to die for. Uh, I gotta get like one of those glass cabinets and put them in there. But that is pretty much everything. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, of course, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, which you probably should because you'll see what games I'm buying over there, which a lot of the times is stuff like what you just saw in this video. So. You know, that's what I'm doing with my spare time. Let me know what you're doing with yours. <laughs> I will see you all in my next video, and you take it easy.